Hey planner friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my standard traveler's notebook. I use this standard traveler's notebook as my on the go planner and sometimes as an everyday carry. And I've been in this setup now for about two and a half months. So I'm gonna talk about how I've set this up and flip through the pages that I've used so far. So if that sounds good, let's jump right in. So as I mentioned, this is my on the go planner and I sometimes refer to it as my everyday carry. So just to step back, I wanna give a brief recap for those who might be new to my channel on my planner lineup. So in terms of my personal planning, I use these two books. Here is the Hobonichi Cousin Abek. So this is the half year version. And this is a daily planner for folks who may not be familiar with the Hobonichi Cousin. And this is very much my like main planner. I do all of my daily planning, my weekly planning, my monthly planning, like my habit tracking, I have some other like longer to-do list here. This is really where I'm doing the meat of my planning and journaling. But because I use the Hobonichi Cousin for so many different purposes, so um, right now I am using the daily pages, let's see, to have a like running to-do list and have some journaling. Um, and I do this most days. So most days I don't have blank pages in my Hobonichi Cousin. And so I've always felt the need to have some type of extra book that has a lot of note pages, either uh, an A6 like term, for a while I was using a Hobonichi, uh, Hobonichi Weeks Mega, which has like, I think it's 219 notes pages. And then I have also on and off used the standard traveler's notebook. And so essentially I refer to this as my on the go planner and my everyday carry sometimes because if I am on the go, so if I'm going to work or if I'm going to an appointment or to my son's swim class, like I am somebody who needs a notebook on me like many of us in the planner community are. And so I will grab my traveler's notebook. And that's because I have more notes pages in here if I need notes pages for whatever reason, and it's more compact. And so this, you know, the Hobonichi Cousin does come with me a lot of places. I often take this also to work, but if I have to choose one or if, you know, if I'm on vacation, like most of the time that this is the only book that would come with me, even though this isn't where I do most of my planning on a day-to-day -day basis, but it still serves an important function in my planner lineup. And so this, this planner is kind of hanging out in the background. So as I'm talking about this setup and, and flipping through the pages I've used here, just keep that in mind that I'm doing most of my like planning, planning in the cousin. And this is kind of like an extension uh, notebook. It's where things sort of spill out into. And it's also what I take with me when I'm on the go. Okay, so now let's get into the traveler's notebook setup. I'm so excited to talk about this. I love traveler's notebooks. I've used them for a couple of years now and I've built up a little collection. And because I love using them, I'm always trying to find an excuse to use them. And so if you've been following along on my channel, you'll know that I started the year off planning to use a Hobonichi Weeks Mega. And I set this up and this is what I had been using for the previous few years as an on the go everyday carry because there are a ton of notes pages in the back. But for whatever reason, me and the Hobonichi Weeks weren't vibing this year. I don't have a good like excuse why. I think one of the big reasons why, and you'll sort of see this depicted in the evolution of how I've set this book up, but I haven't really been needing an extra weekly. Uh, like, so for a couple of years that I was using both the cousin and the weeks, I would use both weeklies in kind of different ways. Like this would be a messy first pass of an outline of things we need to get done this week. And then I would like more closely track when and where stuff was getting done in the weekly layout in the cousin and also rapid log our days. That said, I haven't needed... I haven't had any need for a second weekly um, now that I have 
I also have a weekly layout that I use in my work planner that is also where I do some messy planning sometimes. And so anyway, like I think that this is the reason the Hobonichi Weeks wasn't working for me is that I'm very much relying on the weekly layout and my cousin and I don't need an extra one um, in the form of the weeks. And so I was really, as like this wasn't working for me, I tried um, a pocket traveler's notebook for a hot second. I don't even, I, I know I showed it on my channel at least once. I didn't film a setup video because I didn't use it like long enough to film a setup video. But I, you know, I've been wanting to figure out a way to use my traveler's notebooks more. I love traveler's notebooks. Like I mentioned, I've been using them for a couple years now. And so I have a, a little collection of different covers and charms. I have a ton of inserts. So it also feels like a good way to use up my stash. And so long story short, all of those sort of trials with different uh, on-the-go planners has led me to the standard traveler's notebook. So I'm gonna talk about the setup and then I'll flip through uh, how I've been using, I'll flip through each of the books and talk more specifically about how I've been using this notebook over the last few months. So uh, this is the Standard Traveler's Notebook cover from Travel Traveler's Company. This is in the olive color. Um, I'm not sure if you can catch it. It's a kind of cloudy day here. But it's so beautiful. I've been wanting an olive TN for so long, but buying them secondhand because they were, for those who don't know, these were, I think, originally a limited release a couple of years ago. And so there was a secondhand market. They would, you know, pop up on different sites and they, I feel like, were always a little too pricey for me and I didn't want it that bad. But when they released it as part of the regular lineup, I was really excited to pick one up. And I picked one up from Bomb Kuhin. Um, a shop in Los Angeles that I used to live near and I'm sad that I don't anymore but I'm glad to be able to support them online and so I got uh, I just picked this up a couple of days ago or I, I bought it a couple of weeks ago and it just came in the mail this past week um, and so I was really really excited <laughs> to move back into a traveler's company cover and then here I have two charms on the front these are also from Bomb Kuhin I love, like, this is really what I love about the Traveler's Company um, or a Traveler's Notebook setup is that there's so many different ways and small ways you can customize it and change it up without having to, you know, redo a whole new setup or buy a whole new notebook. And I love it. Um, I really do love the Traveler's Company. So this is a two-book system. I'll just and show that here. So I have two books, each one with a couple of things wrapped around it. So in the front here, I have the monthly planner from Traveler's Company. This is the dated monthly insert for 2023. And then I have wrapped around it the craft folder, which sometimes I have papers in here or stickers. And then this credit card um, holder, which I just use to put some different ephemera and pictures of my family. Um, I love I love this setup for lots of reasons, and one of them is ha being able to display so many pictures of my loved ones this way. So this is the first notebook, and then in the back here I have a Tomoy River paper insert from Good Impressions. They are a shop in Spain, and so if you order from them, which I'll make sure to leave a link to their shop down below, the quality of their notebooks is excellent, but the shipping will take forever. And so I placed a big order at the end of last year and I am still working through my first notebook. So I <laughs> doubt I'll have to place another order um, until maybe later this year or, or even later than that. Um, they have been uh, really nice notebooks to use. Uh, but I have here, this is 160 pages of, I think it's the 52 GSM Tomoy River paper with um, a dot grid. So I didn't get any customizations. I know you can get these inserts, um, or I believe you can. I've heard from uh, Lindsay Scribble's page, if you, I'm sure so many people in the planner community must know her. Um, but I'll link down to her page in the off chance that you don't. But 
Uh, she mentions in her videos that you can uh, leave a comment in uh, the form as you're checking out and indicate that you want a smaller grid size. Um, and I think I would do that next time. I didn't, this is a five millimeter grid and it's just a bit too big for me, but it's fine. I bought a bunch of them and I'm not gonna let them go to waste, but I really do prefer a four millimeter grid and I prefer the um, grid, not the dock grid, but uh, the notebook qualities are excellent otherwise. And this, so this blank insert, I am using essentially as a bullet journal slash notebook slash on the go planner sometimes it's really like whatever I need it to be and the blank insert um, having a blank insert with that you know the flexibility that a blank insert gives you um, is really valuable for me and then it also like creates no pressure if I am not needing any extra space other than my Hobonichi cousin and then around this insert I have and one of these, um, I forget what this is called, uh, wallets from Traveler's Company, these like canvas wallets. They were from a specific release and I'm not sure if you could find them anywhere anymore, but I will see if I can link to them down below or at least find the like exact name of this, but they have, it has a couple of um, like a slip pocket here, some card in slots and then a zipper pocket in the back. And so this, even though the Traveler's Company uh, notebook covers don't have any pockets or, you know, um, it's pretty like bare bones, I feel like this has so much functionality because of all the different folders and stuff and wallet inserts I have inside. So that's the setup. Now let's start from the beginning. So as I mentioned, again, like I'm using this as kind of an on the go planner, everyday carry, if I can only bring one smaller book. And this monthly planner is essentially really all I need on the go in terms of monthly planning. Like I have my phone, I have, you know, that that has a lot of information about our schedules and my work planning and stuff like, like my work plans and schedule. But, you know, in terms of what I need on the go, this is really it. So here, and I use this this is very much like a duplicate of what's of the monthly information that's in my Hobonichi cousin. And then, you know, if I'm on the go and I'm at the dentist and I get an appointment scheduled, I'll just write it in here and then transfer it over into my Hobonichi cousin. And then I also have, so let me actually, I'll just start from the beginning and flip through the setup. So I'm using this page uh, to track our paydays, nothing special. And then I was excited when I got this um, insert because it had this layout, which is similar to a layout that exists in Hobonichi Weeks that I'd used for the last few years to track fitness and exercise stuff. And so that's how I'm planning to use this now. I'm, um, I need to update this, but all of the information I need to update this tracker lives on my phone. So what I track here essentially is if it's a day I close my rings, I will use one of the zig dot uh, markers to mark that here. And then if it's a day I get in some other exercise, I write the first uh, letter of the exercise here. And so this just gives me a really high level overview of my physical activity. But all of my exercises and whether I close my rings are on my Apple Watch or in the Peloton, the Peloton app because I, um, that is the primary like way I exercise. And so I am very behind in filling this out, but I can easily go back to my phone and get the data to fill it out, which I'll do um, probably today because this is serving as a reminder that I wanna keep this up to date. But I like having this tracker here because I like seeing this over a full year and I'm using the Hobonichi Cousin of X set. So what you'll see here in this monthly insert, I'm using the monthly layouts just to future plan and have a sort of snapshot of what's going on in our lives always on me. Because I don't do much digital planning at all for our personal lives, which sometimes makes um, my life a headache. Like I should use our Google Calendar more so my husband can access it. 
Uh, but this, like our personal planning is pretty analog for myself and our family and all the stuff we have going on. And so I like having basically a duplicate of the information of my cousin with me always on the go. And then there are a couple of layouts and spreads I've set up here that I want to be these like annual trackers or collections. And because I'm using the cousin, I don't have, like I like the idea of having these be for the entire year and not split across two six month books. So the fitness tracker is one of those layouts. And then from there, we get into the monthly layouts in this insert. And I started using this in February. So the first few months I here, I was just using the December layout for pen test and to um, do some currently inked. I was, I've been really into my fountain pens recently. And so you'll see um, this all over the place uh, in both of, in, in this, both of these inserts here. And then we get into the monthly planning. Here I did some back planning just for the most important dates. And here we get into the first like real month I set up. And so it's really bare bones, just appointments, events, some travel, whatever work dates or conferences or work travel we have coming up whenever my uh, family will be in town or we have other folks in town. And then sometimes I'll go back and um, jot stuff down that happen. Like I try to write down when I have to take a sick day, either for myself or for because my son is sick, um, which happens all the time because he's in daycare. <laughs> and it feels good to record because uh, like it's obviously recorded if I have to take sick time in um, like my works HR systems. But I like to also record it because it's a good reminder to me like what the month felt like. If I look back on a month and you know I ended up having to take four sick days like it's and then I'm also looking back on my goals and being hard on myself like for me it's a good reminder like no remember <laughs> there was a lot going on and your kid was sick and you were sick um, which has been very much true for us for most of April which was fun. So this is April, and I should also mention that most of these stickers, the monthly stickers here, are from Sterling Inc. And I have a promo code for her shop for 20% off if you're interested, which I will make sure to leave in the description box. Um, but I love, love, love her subscription kit, and I have been using her subscription kits all over um, all over my planners and specifically this setup because I have uh, some extra stickers available and it's a very just easy way for me to decorate and it feel cohesive. So this is the current month. Again, just some appointments, travel, our family will be in town next weekend. And then in this blank space below, I've been using this to just note some like high level stuff we want to get done this month, which one of them we did yesterday. It's to go pick up some new sneakers for, for my son, who I have a, um, a toddler who's turning two next month, which I like, I just can't even believe that as I'm saying that out loud. Um, and we needed to pick up new sneakers for him because he's growing like a weeds. And then I haven't pre-decorated the monthly pages, but I have written stuff down. So birthdays, appointments, again, anything I'd want to have on the go. And then I like stuff I want to remember. So again, I'm using this um, six month cousin. And so I know that there's something I need to do in September. And so I just wrote it down here in September and that is very functional for me in terms of like future planning. So I would say also this is both an on the go planner and a future planner. Like I do put future events and appointments for that happen outside of the six month, uh, the six months of the Hobonichi cousin of Exet in here. And I like having, I like having that space to do that.
And then in the back of this insert, you have these layouts that I don't need, you know, with different time zones and different metric charts. And so what I ended up doing was I cut out this 365 days uh, checkoff sheet. This is a tracker that came in the most recent English version of the Hobonichi Weeks. And I had been using it in the Hobonichi Weeks that I set up in January. And I really liked the tracker and so I decided to cut it out and then I pasted it in here and just put down some washi so it could, I don't know, I was trying to make it look decent and so you, I could cover up the tables that would have been spilling out on the sides. And I haven't uh, kept this up to date, but I'm also tracking this in my Hobonichi Cousin. So the theme of the trackers that I keep in this setup are trackers that are annual trackers, but the information is captured somewhere else because I don't always open this book every day. I work from home like three to four days a week. And so, you know, there I don't leave the house all that often, I guess. Um, and so uh, that is all to say that I don't always open this book. Um, I'm mostly in my cousin. And so the trackers here are ones that I can update when I have time with information I can find either on my phone or in my Obanichi cousin. And then in the back here, I think you get 10 blank note pages. And these note pages I decided to turn into some annual collections. Um, again, because I'm using the six month version of the cousin, there are some things that I would prefer to be tracking annually. And that's easier to do within this insert than in the cousin where I'd have to just rewrite it in the second uh, book, the second set, the second book in the set that starts in July. And so here uh, I start with just writing down my goals for the year and my word of the year. And then I have a list of books I want to read. These are books that were just top of mind for me as the year started. My to be read list is longer and I keep that mostly on Goodreads. If you're on Goodreads and um, interested in friending me, I will leave, I will link down to my Goodreads below. I'd um, love to see what you all are reading. Uh, but here I just had a short list and a place also to capture books that I want to read uh, that somebody might recommend or I heard mentioned somewhere and this is a spot where I, I would write that down. And then here, this is where I'm tracking my books read. So I don't love the way I set this up. And one of the things that I don't love is that I only gave myself a page for this book's read list, even though I set a goal of 50 books to read in 2023 uh, for myself. And I'm, I'm behind that goal, but like I'm doing pretty good. Like the goal is still attainable and I'm really proud of myself for reading 12 books so far this year. This is the first time I have read 12 books by uh, May in a very long time. I uh, was in a PhD program prior to um, being in the job I am now. And so I was a grad student for several years doing lots of reading about lots of different things and that just kind of like killed my love of reading for fun. And so for the past five, or six years, I've probably only finished no more than 10 or 12 books a year. And so the fact that I finished 12 books by early May, even though I'm behind um, the pace I should be if I wanna read 50 this year, is remarkable to me and I'm really proud of that. Um, that's an aside, <laughs> uh, but um, I don't know why I would set up one page if I have this 50 books goal. Uh, and so I ended up cutting this page out of another insert I had from um, another like insert I had that was half used. I have a bunch of traveler's notebook inserts. And so I cut this out and then uh, tipped it in with some washi tape. And so my plan is to just like, whenever I finish this, I'll just let it spill out onto here and here. It doesn't like make sense as a way to set this up if I had thought more about it before I <laughs> finished the setup, but uh, like such is life, it's fine. I will, I would do this differently if I had a blank insert to set up again. Um, and so I'm keeping that in mind if I end up using this setup in 2024. 
And then next I have a books I did not finish list. I'm not sure this needs a full page. And so I might leave this out next time. And then I have here a running list of the podcasts I listen to. Uh, some of these podcasts I listen to really regularly, so it's not that they're new to me, but I thought it would be fun to see all of the different podcasts. And, um, and some of these are like shorter series that I listen to in a year. Here I'm tracking the TV shows we've watched and the movies we've watched. I have a very simple rating system of would watch again with a, a star here. And um, a lot of the TV shows I watch are stuff I've either watched before or would watch again. The movies, it's like half and half. And then the last two collections I had set up was a bucket list for 2023 and a Sunday maybe list. I haven't used either of them. I'm not sure that I would uh, set um, these two collections up here again, especially since I only have 10 pages and I want them, I want it to be like things I'm going to use. And clearly I'm not using that yet. Although maybe I will. I think like, it's hard for me to think of an annual bucket list. I think of things I want us to get done by season. Like what are the, you know, summer fun things I want to make sure we do. But, um, I haven't been good about filling that out. And I, it was something I used to do in terms of just like the fun, um, stuff I wanted to get done in the year or trips I wanted to take or excursions I wanted to do and I haven't I haven't used that this year and so yeah that's the monthly insert these are stickers from Sterling Inc and the other stickers you see here are from Traveler's Company this one too and then here we have my blank insert. Um, I should mention both of these stickers are ones that I picked up at my local stationery shop called Penny Post. I will link them down below. They do they do um, online shipping, so definitely check them out. Really cute stuff. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, <laughs> um, this is my bullet journal um, slash my on the go notebook, my on the go planner. It's a blank insert with 160 pages, 52 GSM Tomy River paper. And I had originally set this up as a journal. So at the beginning of the year, when I wasn't planning to use this as a planner, but instead, um, instead I had been planning to use a traveler's notebook as my journal. And I had set up this notebook as my journal, which is how I used it for January. So the first, I don't know, 20 pages in here are all just pen and paper journaling. Sometimes like, you know, really trying to get some thoughts out or wrestle with some things. Other times just journaling about nothing. But I like journaling every day. It really helps. Um, it's like a good mental health practice for me. And so I have moved that journaling into my cousin because I like having a daily page that reminds me and forces me to journal. Um, and I like integrating my journaling and my planning um, because it, again, mostly just, it helps me journal. I can't, I'm not very consistent when I try to journal in a separate book. And so that's what I was using this insert for, for the month of January. And then I decided to move into this as my on the go planner and added the monthly insert. And then, when we get into those pages, they're all over the place. So I'm just going to flip through them and use that to talk about the different ways that I've used this insert. But essentially, I use this blank insert in lots of different ways to fit my needs at the time. And those needs have changed over time over the last few months, um, especially like I've been experimenting with different layouts, but also, you know, Sometimes we're really busy, sometimes we're not, sometimes I'm traveling. And so I really like this setup in large part because of that flexibility. This blank insert gives me a ton of flexibility. So for a couple of weeks, I had set up weekly layouts. I had set up a monthly um, plan. This is very similar to the tending list in the Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets, the goal planning um, planner. I like that 
setup of the tending list. And so tried to replicate that here and then tracked my habits here in February. I ended up moving this back into my cousin again because I touch my cousin so much throughout the day. Like I can just keep trackers up to date. And when I put stuff in here that I need to keep up to date, I'm pretty bad at keeping it up to date. Um, here I have a list of stationary spending. Some months were better than others uh, in a stationary wish list. This is something I put in here because I just didn't have the space at the time anywhere in the cousin. Um, and so I like, this is exactly what I use this blank insert for. It's just like stuff I can't fit in the Hobonichi cousin ends up in here. Sometimes I'll write like a uh, to-do list for the weekend in here. If you know we're out and about and this is the notebook I have with me, like while I'm you know, sitting outside my son's swim class, I uh, will jot down what we have to get done here and that works really well for me. And then I did a similar layout of a monthly plan in March, but again, I stopped habit tracking in here and just copy this and move this back into my cousin. I also tried to set up a gratitude page here, which I didn't keep up to date, although I have um, figured out a way to integrate daily gratitude into my Hobonichi cousin. And then here I was having like a running monthly to-do list and to-buy list, um, which was kind of working. I wouldn't come back to it a ton, uh, but I never really come back to monthly to-do list. I don't know. It's like, I can't, I need to figure out a way to better integrate that type of planning. Um, into like actually the daily things that get done on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, I set up some weeklies that I um, was using and needed. And these weeklies, just to note, differ from my Hobonichi cousin in that they're like pretty messy. They don't have any work stuff. I'm not tracking my time. I use my weeklies to like rapid log our days and also plan out the week. This is very bare bones. And then this is just a running to-do list of stuff I wanted to get done that week. I um, haven't been needing this extra weekly in a while, as you can see. Like I set up a couple weeks, I didn't fill them out. Here's another to-do list from the weekend or Sunday. I also have some monthly reflections and plans. These are also prompts from the power sheets um, set up. So it's gratitude, good things, goals that are growing well, what's not working, what I read or listened to, and my favorite memories. And then a place for me to start thinking about plans for the next month. I had an extra picture of my son I had printed and thought I would put that in here. You can really see it, like how I'm using this. This insert varies a lot. Um, here I did some journaling, thinking about my goals. I got a bunch of swa um, washi tape from Archer and Olive and swatched them here. They're all really pretty. This is my first purchase from Archer and Olive and I was very happy. And then these are washi tapes from Sterling Inc. If um, you happen to be checking out her shop, I love this washi tape. It's one I had been eyeing for such a long time and I'm so glad I picked it up. And I've been using it so often that I might pick up a couple more. Here I was planning out my reading journal, I'm planning to film a setup for that in a couple of weeks. So if you have any questions about my reading journal or anything you'd like to see, please um, leave those down in the comments. Here's some more journaling, a weekend to-do list. We were, um, we traveled for Easter weekend, my son and I, and so we, I was writing a packing list for us. I made a list of YouTube videos I wanted to work on. I never came back to this list, so I'm just <laughs> Xing out um, these open boxes. I hate seeing like open task places, especially when I know I'm not gonna come back to this list. 
and I'm just getting to the second one. I filmed this one, I'm doing this one, and these are the next two I wanna do. My reading journal setup, and then I wanna um, talk about my ink journal. I've gotten really into fountain inks, fountain pens and fountain pen inks over the last few months. Really bare bones to-do list here. This was last weekend. Um, I got a bunch of new washi tape from the Coffee Monsters Co. and new stickers, and I was so excited. I low-key forgot I had placed this order. I And this is no shade to Helen. I know she, you know, is, is a small business, and she's very transparent with her shipping times. Um, but I had just forgotten I had placed this order, and it was a delightful little package to receive. Um in the mailbox and so I uh, was swatching those here making another short weekend to-do list and then um, here I did something a bit different trying to think through some plans and goals for April again I had a running monthly to-do list and a to-buy list and I think the I keep writing these but I don't always like come in and check on them and I think that that's what I need to do um, is like figure out a way to come back to these monthly to-do list but it's a good essentially I'm just like brain dumping stuff I need to be on top of here again um, a March reflection April plans you can see the sterling ink washi tape all over here and then for April I decided to try a one page setup for each week since I wasn't needing uh, two pages per week set up, like it, as you saw in March, where I ended up leaving a bunch blank. Um, let me see if I can find one. Like here. I didn't need all this space. I barely used it, but I thought it would be, I, I wasn't ready to let go of the weekly layout. And so I set up uh, four weeks. I did this set up at the beginning of April with the week per page. And I used it for the first two weeks and it was helpful. And the way I was planning to use it was essentially like as a kind of um, future log for stuff coming up in the month that I didn't wanna write down in my Hobonichi Cousin just yet. And then I had a running to-do list here. And then I didn't use it at all the last two weeks of April. So I'm filming this a week into May, oh, exactly May 7th. And I didn't set up any weeklies in here for May. So I think that is done. I think I'm just gonna use this to um, have my monthly set up and then use whatever blank note pages I need throughout the rest of the month, but I'm not gonna pre-set up weekly layouts like I had done in March and April. Um, and when I say pre-set up, so I would sit down at the beginning of the month and I would do this monthly layout, this monthly planning, some reflecting, and then I'd set up my weeks at the same time. And so I think I'm just going to do this monthly setup here again for May. And it's a week into May and I haven't done my reflections or my plans yet, but that's fine it'll maybe I'll do it later today um but yeah so that is that gets us to the end of this insert that is how I have been using this as you can see it's kind of whatever I need it to be that is the best way to explain it but I really love having an act like a blank notebook with me all the time um for a variety of reasons and so I'm going to continue playing around with this. I've been really enjoying this setup, um, meaning this setup uh, and this insert and the flexibility that comes with having this 160 page blank insert and this monthly insert. So I feel like I have, you know, all of the dated stuff I need here and I can really just use this as however I want to and however I need to. Um, as various stuff comes up. So that is, that was a, a chatty uh, setup video, but this is my uh, standard traveler's notebook. I really love this layout. I love this setup. 
it's working really well for me and I am really happy to be able to use so much of the like Traveler's Company stuff I have lying around. So if you have hung out with me this long, thank you so much for spending your time with me. Let me know if you have any questions about anything you saw, where it's from, what it's called, down in the comments. And I will catch up with you all soon. Bye now.